tell him about the time we faced him. All right. Well, as I remember... Avenger headquarters. Welcome to the MCU DNT Plus podcast with myself, Andy Stead. And I'm Jarian Gibson. And we have got our guest host, Alex Stroud, back. How are we doing, Alex? Back again. I'm doing great. Thank you again for having me. You're welcome. Like we said, you are, uh, like we said last week, part of furniture now, mate. <laughs> well, you'll have to, you'll, as, as of next week, you'll have to come up with your own intro. I'm not going to do it anymore. All right, that's it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, fed, I'm fed up with, I'm fed up with introdu- introducing you. You can do it yourself next week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, it's good to be back, guys. We've had a couple of days. We're, we're a little bit delayed this week. Um, I've had a, I had a really busy weekend and I know it was a holiday over there for you guys as well, yep. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's good to it's good to get back chatting about Marvel, um, especially as we've had a, a new release in Shang Chi. Um, so and that's going to be a big part of our conversation today, isn't it? And um, we're going to do this episode as a whole episode. So we're going to do a Shang Chi review, and we're going to do uh, our new normal uh, news and rumors breakdown, um, and we're also going to chat about last week's episode of What If the Doctor Strange episode. So just if you're listening. Or watching, guys. Um, if you haven't seen Shang Chi, um, you might want to skip ahead um, to the point where we stop talking about that. We don't know when that's going to be yet, but I'll put it in the show notes <laughs> so you can skip ahead if you just want to listen to the news and rumor <clears throat> breakdown and the what if from last week. All right. So, but we are going to start right now by talking about Shang Chi. So, Jarian, you you've got you've got. Uh, Actually, before we start talking about Shang Chi, we should make the listeners aware that myself and Jarian have seen it, and Alex actually hasn't seen it. Um, but you're you're fully aware of this, Alex, and you are. This is like a this is like a disclaimer. Now you're happy to talk about Shang Chi. Yeah? I'm so happy to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. When do you think you're going to get to see it? By the way, just before we start, um, I hope in the next couple of days. It's kind of like the plan. Um, I was just mentioning earlier. I kind of am going to try and sneak away maybe tomorrow for a couple hours. Maybe go see it in the morning if I can. But you know, excellent. Everything works out. So excellent. Well, um, Jari, look at you. You're you're Shang Chi'd up. If anybody's watching the video here, if you're only listening, you can't see Jari. has got his t-shirt on. He's got his background. <laughs> it's like he's just fully fully Shang Chi'd. So um, coming in, what was your initial initial thoughts, Jarian? I, I loved it as a as an origin story. Um, I, I loved it. Uh, a couple of minor issues, some some pacing issues with me, um, but for for Shang Chi's introduction into the MCU, I, I thought it was a really good film. Mm. Yeah, I, I thought, like you said, as an origin story, I thought it was um, it was very good. Yeah. Um, I um, I was quite surprised actually at where the movie went in the third act. Yep. I did not realize that that's where it was going. And that was quite refreshing that from the trailers, you didn't realize that's where the movie was going. Yep. I got a lot of things wrong from the trailers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, well, well, I didn't, I got it all. I, I pretty much assumed that's exactly what's going to happen. But my, what I saw end in the trailers ended in the second act. Yep. And the third act was like, where did this come from? Like, this is a whole different movie. Like there was, the only, there was only the one scene, obviously, with when you first saw the Great Protector in the trailer that was mm-hmm. in that third act. Other than that, you didn't. Pre- I, mean, I mean, and the fight scene that's in the background there, but you wouldn't have known that was in the third act in the in the trailer. It was very. I think they hid what the, where the story went in the third yes. act very well from the trailer. They did, and uh, um, definitely got a, a never ending story vibe with uh, Shang Chi and the Great Protector. <laughs> if you've seen that movie. <laughs> 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 yeah it was a little bit like that wasn't it yeah, yeah. i was surprised at that um i, I was surprised at how um at how uh, mythical it got as well when they went into uh tai lao yep. is that my pronouncing that right tai lao yeah with all the sort of different animals and um and all the sort of mythical creatures and pokemon was... the pokemon vibes <laughs> yeah it was a little bit like that yeah that's that's point it's yeah i didn't put it down like that yeah but that was that was surprising and i'm not sure i'm still on the fence as to whether i liked it or not i understand why they did it but i don't know whether i liked it or whether i'm a bit like hmm did they need to do that i don't know i, I think so because it, it kind of the, the animals there did play has some plot points there 
um, like you saw with, with Trevor and when in Win Lose Compound, the one they first discovered. Um, and then once they got into the final battle and so forth, you, you saw that those animals did play a role. So um, they had some plot points there with them. So it, it's fine. Uh, but one thing, you know, I, I was kind of worried about how this film would do. And the box office actually did a pr- pretty well job. I mean, it, it did 94.5 million over the four day Labor Day weekend. Um, wow. And just for comparison, the and it actually sh- shattered a record too. So the last Labor Day weekend record was 30.5 million. And Shang-Chi did three times that in this weekend. Whoa. So they're expecting today wow. for it to go over 100 million. Um, and if we're being Labor Day weekend, that's really good, um, especially when we're still in the, the pandemic world and in some areas and people's, you know, uneasiness with movie theaters. And, and also there's some global areas you can't go to movie theaters still. Um, and Labor Day weekend being that last big outdoor weekend here in the States, um, I, I think it did pretty well. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I saw it in um, IMAX uh, over here in the UK and uh, four ten on friday afternoon um so maybe a little bit early you know schools had only just finished but i was like you know picked up my kids straight to the cinema <laughs> was straight there but it was it was quite quiet i must say but then is, is that unusual at 4 10 probably or not on a friday you know it's probably not going to be that busy at that time on a friday maybe later on in the evening it, it got busier yep. um but yeah i mean that's great that's good news that it's performed well as we know there was a lot uh, well there was a lot of rumors that other movies were looking to how well Shang-Chi was going to do in the box office as to whether they were going to release on time. So hopefully this is a good um, indication that they might all release when they should release. And speaking of that, that's Venom 2 was one that actually changed. They moved up the time now because of Shang-Chi. And I know Eternals was was looking at how Shang-Chi would do. Um, so it, it seemed like those might stay on time or even be moved up like Venom was. So... Um, I'll talk yeah. on the news, the, the new date for Venom, but they moved it up uh, a little bit. So, yeah, nice. And um, I'll tell you something. I, so, I mean, I'm, I, I love a good fight scene. I love a good fight scene. And I think everybody does, to be honest, yes. don't they, really? Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you what I really liked about, or what my opinion was about the fight scenes in Shang-Chi. Loved them, all yep. of them. But what I really liked is they all, it, not one fight scene was the same and not one fight scene was influenced by the same sort of martial art yep. movie. So um you the the the, the first fight scene um between Wen Wu and Shang Chi's mum yep. was very hit uh, you know crouching tiger hidden yes. dragon. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful dance. It was like a it like I say it was like a ballet, wasn't it? Watching them fight. It was beautiful. It wasn't aggressive. It wasn't aggressive. It was just, you know, that whole sort of um you know, kung fu flowing, um, kind of like a kind dance of, almost. Yeah, kind of. yeah, absolutely like a dance. Um, you had influences of, uh, you know, you're looking at um, some of the fight scenes which were very frantic and very um, fast paced. You know, Shang Chi's fight with Death Dealer in yes. the um, in the the, the high rise tower. Yep. That kind of reminded me of um, some fight scenes that we've seen in like Daredevil and fight scenes that I've seen before in like the Raid. And mm. things like that, you know, very fast, um, fast moving. I'm, I'm standing there doing this, like chopping my mm. arms, like I know what I'm doing. I look like I'm at some 80s rave. I don't know <laughs> what I'm doing, but it was very fast moving and very, um, very quick and very aggressive. Um, and then there was, um, there was other fight scenes that, that took influences from other movies, like sort of the sort of slapstick, like the fight on the um, bus. Yes. Which was very sort of Jackie Chan slapstick type fight my cameo you know, so yeah you're coming out <laughs> my God. and he spoke a lot as well didn't he yeah 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 so if anybody's if anybody's just listening and you're not watching jarian really looks like the guy on the bus or the guy on the bus really looks like jarian i'm not sure um but yeah that's scary yeah um but yeah so um i re- but my point i think being is that not one fight scene was the same they didn't use the same style of fight scene yes okay it was all um sort of kung fu martial arts but it was very mixed styles and a mixed approach to each each scene yep. which was um which was quite refreshing when watching the fight scenes because it wasn't like oh here's another fight scene it yep. was like oh wow what are they going to do in this one so i really enjoyed that aspect of of the um of the action um that was that was good for me 
one Did of the nice th- things go ahead alex uh, i was just gonna say do you think they actually had like maybe more than three martial arts styles in that movie i mean do you think they had like several different kinds probably or i'm not i i, I mean for my untrained eye yes yes yes, yes. i would say multiple too but i don't really know so um, i can't I can't say that for certain, but it did seem like that just purely for the fact that the, so I do know it. T- I know a tiny, tiny little bit. Um, I know that sort of Kung Fu was, it was invented by, um, or Wing Chun Kung Fu was invented by a woman. And um, it was uh, invented by a little old, little old lady. And she wasn't very strong, but basically the, the premise of this was, was that she um, basically used people's power against them. Mm-hmm. So she rechanneled that power. And that was very much like Shang's, mother and uh his aunt aunt yep yeah and the, and the style in, in Talo too the whole style there yeah their whole style was almost mm-hmm. like we're not going to hurt anybody we're just going to and 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 that goes back it, it's and i'll tell you the best well best modern um uh portrayal of that, that i've seen is uh, and i don't particularly like the movie if i'm honest but there's a moment in there jackie chan in the new um karate kid with Jaden smith he fights kids and it's different from when um uh, 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 um, what's Pat, it, Pat Pat yeah 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 when he fights because they're not really kids they're like they're like men that he fights mm-hmm. but in in the new one aren't they they're like actual children they're yep. like sort of 10 and and he fights them without actually fighting a single one he doesn't do anything he just moves out of the way and it's beautiful and that's a really good um demonstration of that style of kung fu where it's just sort of passive it's not actually fighting it's just moving out of the way um, and just directing their power somewhere else. So that was really interesting. But then obviously when you see uh, Wen Wu's style, it was very aggressive, mm-hmm. you know, but that's going to be like that, isn't it? Because you've got good versus bad, light yep. versus dark. So they're going to have that contrast. But um, but to answer your question, Alex, my untrained eye would say yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, and, and going back to the fight scenes too, it, it was interesting when you see uh, Wen Wu and, and the mom fighting in the beginning, and then when the final battle between Wen Wu and Shang Chi, there's some throwbacks to that fight scene. You know that that slow motion eye look. There's that one part of it um, where you, you could see when we got thrown back to when he first met Shang Chi's mom. Mm. Yeah, and there was um, talking about the Karate Kid, my, my little Karate Kid reference there. There was um, there was Karate Kid vibes there when um, he got the rings mm-hmm. when when Shang got the rings, and he was remembering back when he was little. And his mum was showing him the forms, like the forms, yes. you know, when he was at the, the house and the mum was showing him the forms. And he kind of went, oh, yeah, these are the forms. Where now I'm guiding these these rings. And it's the same thing as what I was doing then. So it's a little bit like, you know, paint the fence and wax on, wax yep. off. Mm-hmm. It was a little bit, I, I felt that a little bit as well. And um, yeah, I, I enjoyed the throwbacks too. All, all the flashbacks to when he was a child, his upbringing, you know, his sister, um, all that was uh, really interesting. The... the but one thing that did kind of stick out to me, it, it felt more like a, a Win Wu story than a Shang Chi story at times. Mm. Yeah, yeah, how, definitely. How long was Win Wu around? Like, I mean, was this a long period of time? Was this, you know, five hundred years? Was this 100 I mean, a hundred years? Thousand was... years, wasn't it? Okay. I think they said about a thousand years yeah. as well. Because okay. that then that then crops up in the in the um, end credit scene, doesn't it? Which we'll talk about in a minute. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think they said about a thousand years. Um, so he didn't, he never really struck me as a person that had been around for a thousand years though. Like he never really struck me as that wise person that had seen and lived everything. Um, times almost, you know. Well, it, yeah. well, it, it didn't, it didn't because they had the flashbacks of him when he was back in the, the ancient days and how he was conquering, um, how he was conquering different kingdoms and that kind of stuff. And you know, the Ten Rings organization throughout time. So it did go through that whole progression of the Ten Rings and how they've interfered and how they've done other things too uh, as well. Um, but it was interesting though that they really never... Did they ever say how he got the Ten Rings? No. Because when we, when we first was, saw him, he already had them. So it was mentioned that he... Did, he, did they say it was in one of the um, subtitles and it said something along the lines of he found them in a tomb or in a, a in crater a, or some crater or yeah. a casket or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, and I think well that they'll we should buddy again by the end credit scene they should um, discuss uh, look further into that you know delve a yep. little bit further into that in future at some point I don't know when. Um, uh, so something I was 
pleasantly surprised at, and I, I can't pronounce what what was the actress's name? Aquafina. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I really until this movie, could, I couldn't stand her. If I'm honest, like it, she actually annoyed me, and I was worried that she would annoy me in this movie. And she didn't. And I was really quite pleased with that. Actually, I thought she played the part really well. It was like she, from roles that I've seen her in, she'd kind of just toned back a little bit. Yeah. And just, but just now to that kind of nerdy friend, but also on the other hand, not being an unrealistic person. Like I just felt like I felt like her other roles that I've seen her in have just been very unrealistic. Like even, even in some of the fantasy roles, like in, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Jumanji um, 2. Yes. The, the, the sequel. Obviously, it's an unrealistic person, but I, I just never bought into her. I was like, and it was just it's really annoying. And I was really worried that that's what I was going to feel getting in this movie. But actually, I thought she'd done a, a superb job. And I was actually, you know, when her scenes come on, I was quite, you know, I enjoyed her scenes. Yeah, she was very, very balanced, uh, especially with her comedic side, because she's more known for her comedy than most things. And like, for example, I loved her in Neighbors too. Um, but I can see what you're saying with, um, Jumanji too, but I felt that she was very balanced with the serious side and the comedic side, and they just had enough of that, uh, for her in, in the movie. And I'll first say I was completely wrong about Katie. I thought she was, she was a, some undercover agent, you know, keeping it befriending Sh- Sean as he was his name, um, when he ran away. Um, but, uh. I thought she was someone to keep an eye on him, you know, make sure he's getting in trouble or report back to even Wu, uh type of thing that maybe she could have even been a death dealer since we never, you know, speaking of death dealer, we never got anything other than it's the death dealer and nothing else. So um, with Katie, I was completely wrong. She was his friend, very close friends, um, possibly later on in the movie. It seems like maybe, maybe more towards the end. Um, but, uh, but who knows, but uh, she went to, she went to tell, tell out with them, got the training actually had a pretty good point in the, in the final battle to help, you know, win that battle. So I liked her whole arc in the story. Yep. Yep. Me too. Yeah, it really did. And that's surprising. Alex. I was just gonna say, did, uh, so death dealer was working for win Wu yep. in essence. Okay. Yep. Just wanted and, to make sure. And there was no, there was no reveal about, because you know, every time you see a mass character in, in the trailers, <laughs> there's some kind of twist or some kind of turn or something. Mm. There was none of that. It was just straightforward. Death dealer was just basically an agent of win Wu. That's all it was. Yeah. Wow. I was thinking. I was thinking the whole time. It's his mum. It's his mum. It's his mum. <laughs> She's still mom. alive. Still, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't. Yeah. But um, yeah, the, the fight scene in the in the building, you know, with the uh, bright neon lights behind yeah. him, and then you see the overhead views. Um, I I really enjoyed that. I thought that was great. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so the, the the so something I'd like to talk about, I'd like to explore a little bit more, because obviously it was huge from the trailer. Huge news from the trailer was the abomination on Wong. Yes. In in this movie, uh, especially the the fight now. I did not expect to what happened to happen at the end of that fight, where it seems like Wong is training Abomination. Mm-hmm. They're in cahoots in that fight scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, so, so were they? Was that now? Right. Okay. So now, was he throwing the fight? Were they? Were they sort of? Do you know what I mean? It was it an act? A little bit, you know, like they're, they're someone's gambling on it or something like that. I don't know. Um, or was it that he's they're using it as a training fight? Because he didn't he come in and say, "I've kept telling you not to stop throwing your uh, stop pulling your punches" or something like that, doesn't he? Yeah, so it almost seemed like a training fight, but also that they were possibly in cahoots as well. So it's interesting to see if how Abomination goes forward in the MCU because everyone thought, "Oh, it's going to be tied to Ross or tied to Val," where there was none of that in the movie at all. There was nothing there to tie that. It was just Wong and Abomination, and and then even. Once the fight was over, you saw them together behind the scenes in the back of the fight. Um, and they also leave together in, in, a, in a portal to go back to wherever one was going back to. So, And they, they'd look like in the portal, they looked like there was like um, it looked like red beams, yep. almost like a red beam cell or something like that, that maybe Abomination was being held in. I don't know. Um, but I, th- that was really interesting because like we yep. said, that was completely not what anybody was expecting. I think almost everybody thought that you know, abomination would end up being a villain or yeah, or something like that. But also too, what's interesting is the producer also confirmed that Tim Roth did voice him. The very little we heard from, from abomination, that was Tim Roth, according to the producer. It was just some grunts. I don't think he actually said any words, did he? Yeah, not really. I don't think so. I liked his look though. Yep. A lot more detailed, a lot more personal, wasn't it? The look more comic accurate. 
Did, did they talk about him being more evolved or or whatnot in comparison? Not to the not in the movie. movie. Outside the movie, the producers have and yeah. people with the film have, but in the movie, no. So it's interesting to see where this um this arc for Abomination goes. And I know Abomination is supposed to be in She Hulk, so it's going to be interesting to see if we get some more detail around that, and maybe is She Hulk before Shang Chi? Well, mm-hmm. we'll have to find out and, and see because I know he'll be more of a role in that um than this movie so but even that whole that whole fight tournament thing you know that played a big role because they got there and then he finds out you know that his dad kind of tricked him to go there to get him and his sister because the dad's after their jade amulets that the mother gave them um but just going to his sister and they fight in the initial fight scene there and his sister is badass right Mm -hmm. let's address that now his sister is, is badass and she's a new character because i don't remember her from the comics i think she's almost a brand new character in, in this story yeah, uh, yeah I, I i i couldn't tell you i, I think I she know. is because i did not remember from the comics and i think i read also too that she's a brand new character for the story yeah i think i read the same at some yeah. point or at least heard the same yeah i think her sister was good um obviously we'll talk about her last little scene um in the movie yep in a little bit yeah on. but yeah but she was very um th- there was a quote that she made wasn't she where they said uh um i think katie said to her so you just decided to go and make your own empire at 16. Yep. She said, if, if my dad wasn't going to let me be a part of his, then I was going to create my own. Exactly. So she always seemed to want that kind of yep. position, didn't she? Yep. So I think, I think uh, going into what happened in her end credit scene was, um, was not a surprise really. Well, and um, her story is interesting too, as well, because she, she wasn't allowed to train with, you know, while when Wu made sure that Shang-Chi was getting training while he was becoming, you know, all powerful weapon, um she wasn't allowed to train with them she basically had to watch on the sidelines and train in secret um and she was you know but just as badass as shang chi if not even better at some point because she you know even though he was it's like he was holding back when they first uh, faced off um he was holding back but she was still going full bore and, and she can hold her own even the final battle scene um when they're at in Talo, um you know she pretty much holds her own there and it's a big part of that battle scene so mm. I must admit I'm talking talking about the um going back to the uh San Francisco scenes. I was at one point sitting there thinking, are we gonna see Scott Lang? Is he gonna just show up? Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe put a big foot in front of that tram. Or that bus to stop it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I was thinking that would how awesome would that have been? That that's what that's how it stopped. And it, he did wouldn't have had to do much, just put a big foot in front of the tram. The tram smashes into his foot. He goes down and waves, and then he shrinks off and flies off, and that's it. That's and it. there was discussions done. of that too, but they didn't want to take away from the story. There were discussions of having other MCU people, other MCU heroes in the movie making cameos or something like that, but they didn't want to take away from the story. There also too was rumors of MI6 being connected to this story as well, but that also yep. um, was not done because they didn't want to take away from the story. Which I'm glad they they didn't, mm-hmm. um, because you want to stay core to Shang Chi and, and Wen Wu and the whole family story there. Yeah, I think, yeah, there would have been too many bits going on if, yep. if, if they would have done things like that, especially the MI6 bit, because that would have opened up. We've not seen anything really apart from um, Peggy, any, yep. and, uh, anything from over, 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 over my side, really. So it would have been a little bit, um, it's like, hold on, what, there's this whole other sort of organisation that's coming in. We, you want to introduce that and we don't get enough of it. Maybe that would have been a little bit too much, but yeah, agreed. And so did you I, catch uh, did you catch the back, back of that tournament real quick where you, all the fighting with abomination and so forth? Did you catch some other Easter eggs there? There was one oh. when they're walking through the low-level fighters at the very end, there was a black widow fighting someone with extremists. Did you guys catch that? I, I caught the extremists. I didn't catch I did, well, Alex wouldn't have caught you ain't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I caught the extremist bit, yeah, yep. but I didn't I and I it took me a minute to think about what it was. I was like, what was that? Because because my instant thought was, was that a mutant? Um, and then I thought, no, hold on. I've seen that before. And it went through my head for a minute. And I was like, oh, it's that. And then I think yep. I spent so much time thinking about that. I didn't even, I didn't realize it. Oh, it was a Black Widow, was it? Yep. It was a Black Widow fighting someone with extremists. So we, we, we know that this is going to be post uh, Far From Home from what the timeline looks like now. This movie is set after Far From Home. So we know that uh, there's a Black Widow out there fighting. In, in that in that uh, in that tournament, but there's also too an extremist person who survived from Iron Man three or 
Extramix tech is still out there being worked on, possibly. That was yeah, maybe, interesting. Maybe refined and better yep. at this point or something. You never know. Yeah, so they don't go yeah, too hot. Potentially. Yeah. Um, that was um uh they're talking about the timeline. It's yep. obviously set in present day yes. MCU. I mean it it tells you present day. So as far as I'm concerned, I think that pretty much says that this is the latest thing that we've it seen. Is. Um there was the posters on the wall before he went up to Katie's apartment that said, um, you know, if you got post blip anxiety and um, I think they've, there was a name for it. I'm not, well, I'll guess, I think, was it like blip anxiety or something like that? I, I, they said, it said something on the posters. So yeah. obviously they're, you know, and they look quite old, the posters. They look like they've been up for a while. So yeah, I think we can safely assume this is around about the same time as uh, Far From Home and maybe just shortly after Falcon and Winter Soldier. It's, it's definitely after time. Falcon Winter Soldier because this felt like everything was almost back to normal in this movie. There wasn't a lot about the blip other than like when they had, were out with their friends drinking. Um, there wasn't much anxiety or much talk about the blip or anything like that. It was more focused on, on the story. So it seems like we're almost back to normal now in the MCU timeline mm-hmm. post blip. Yeah. Yeah. So, so was there anything else that connected to Iron Man 3? Um, so what, stuff? when Wen Wu was in his office, there was stuff in there where he where he was watching stuff where you could see like a Ten Rings organization. There were some callbacks to Iron Man 1. Um, but the biggest callback to Iron Man 3 was Trevor Slattery. So once uh, Shang-Chi and his sister, they get uh, taken by Wen Wu and put in basically uh, captivity in his fortress, his compound. Um, they hear someone making noises. It's Trevor Slattery. Um, basically, um, if you watch the All Hail the King shorts where it ended with uh, the Mandarin wanting to see him and him to answer for his taking the Mandarin's name, um, that's where basically what happened to Trevor Slattery. He got taken to the compound. Uh, he explained that um, he was going to be killed, but uh, when we kind of kept him around for him being a jester like person. Um, and he was doing performances for Win Woo <laughs> at the <laughs> compound. So, and uh, Trevor Slattery's arc was interesting because he befriended one of the mystical creatures uh, from Te Lao, um, and was able to talk to it. Um, and the reason why they wanted to, uh, when we wanted his kids back, was their amulets their mom gave him. And those amulets basically, there were eyes to a dragon at the compound. That kind of showed the way to 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 Tai Lao how to get there when the straight path was going to appear. Um, but the creature that that Trevor befriended and could talk to was how Shang Chi and his sister and them actually got there before uh, once they skipped the compound before that straight path and that day of easy you know passage to it got there. Uh, so when we was looking for Tai Lao for many years, and that's how he met, he met his wife, uh, Shang Chi's mother. <laughs> So he was so so just to, to really quickly, I don't want to go into it too much, Alex, because I don't think there's any need to, because anybody listening would have hopefully oh, seen yeah. it. Yeah. But so originally he was looking for Tay Lau for because he thought that there was this great power there. Mm-hmm. Then to cut a long story short, he was then looking for Tay Lau at the end before Shang Chi and the others got there, because he thought that his wife, so Shang Chi's mother, was being kept there against her will. Okay. behind that big door that you can see behind Jari in there. On the yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, on the right. And now that leads me to the, the last, well, other than the end credits bit, but I think the last bit we need to talk about with Shang-Chi, like that last, that final act where it just went crazy yes. into the sort of mythical realm of just all sorts of stuff. Um. And I mean, I de- what did you make of that, Jari? And did the whole sort of soul suckers feed in that big thing that was, I, I mean, I, I, I was just like, I was so surprised yeah. by how it went. Yeah. I just sort of went, I just just sort of a bit shocked, really, by yep. the ending part, you know? So remember, remember I thought those other dragons were tied to Iron Fist? Well, I was wrong there too as well. They're basically soul sucker dragons working for the creature behind the wall. Um, where I guess the, in, they explain that in the past, those creatures in that uh, that big creature behind the wall, the creature of the dark, I forgot what it's called, something like that, um, the darkness or whatever. But that was basically, they talked about the seven ancient cities of heaven, um, which I thought right there was an indirect tie to, to Iron Fist because that is one of those ancient cities that you don't see. But those creatures basically devoured those cities. They 
they killed everyone. The soul suckers feed that other big dragon behind there um, to power it. Um, and basically the great protector helped them defeat that and imprison them behind a wall, behind that wall in, in the past. And so they were the last line of defense of that city for that creature. So it was interesting how that went. I did not expect that at all. Um, but that's where you come down to this fight scene. You see my background between Wen Wu and Shang-Chi because he thinks basically the, the rings corrupted him in a way to where they wanted the creature, the, the creature wanted to be set free, but he kept hearing his wife's voice saying, come rescue me. And basically it, it's, it's almost a, it's a love story for Wen Wu. Mm. Um, I, I would mm. say his, his arc in the movie theater. Um, yeah, he's because he almost redeems himself at one point, doesn't yep, he? Yep. We're not in the movie theater, in the movie. Uh, it, it's a love story for Wen Wu. But yeah, he almost does redeem himself. Um, there's a big fight between him and Shang-Chi. Um, and then basically Shang-Chi and his sister are the ones to defeat the dragon with, with the help of the great protector and Katie. But and, and going back to that particular fight scene that you've got for your background there, that that sort of that was your big. Um, so going back to what I was saying about the different styles of fight scenes, mm-hmm. you actually sort of. I mean, yeah, I, I I'm fully aware that they all use computer generated imagery um, and assistance in that in special effects and that. But obviously, that one was your big special effects. You know, lightning and gold colors and jumping high and big booms and all that, where some of the others were far more subtle. This was the in-your-face, typical superhero big battle, wasn't it, between goody and baddie? Yep. Um, so that was another style of fight scene, Alex, that we had. You know, there was still great martial arts in there, mm-hmm. but it was your big, you know, good versus bad, big heavy hitters, superhero landings, yep. all that kind of stuff. <laughs> superhero you <know>. landings. <laughs> yeah. I tell I tell you what, I got to. Uh, uh, yeah, it was good. Um, like I said I watched it in the IMAX, and the sound is just incredible in the IMAX. It's just, it's beautiful. It really is, and they they nail it. You know, sometimes you go into some cinemas, and the sound they've just got it up. It's almost like they've got it up too loud. Mm-hmm. You know, like, turn it down. It's everything's vibrating. It's just wrong. But the sound in the IMAX is just tuned perfectly, and some of the noises that them rings make. I just I love noises in movies. So I tell you what, there's a really good one. Um, oh, what Star Wars is it? One of the three prequel Star Wars. Can't remember which one it is. I think it's Attack of the Clones when Obi Wan Kenobi is chasing um, uh, Jango Fett, and Jango Fett from Slave One sets off one of these those like, death charges. Type charges yeah. yeah the noise the noise he's like oh i could replay that noise just over and over again and some of those noises that the rings make i could just replay those noises over and over again they're beautiful noises and then amplified that in the imax theater um were just beautiful but yeah that was your big <clears> sort <throat> of let's have everything blow up fight scene and that was great but yeah the whole sort of creatures from another realm dimension yep universe i'm not there's sure. more dimension those are different dimensions because they, they, I guess they kind of say that the seven cities of heavens are different dimensions as well. And that's where I was like, well, that's your iron fist tie right there. So indirectly, um, but we, you know, with Kun Loon, that, that type of stuff. So, yeah. So moving on then, we've just, well, I've got almost to the end of the movie. So the, uh, the end credit scenes. Well, before we get there though, so, um, it was kind of interesting. Did you think that it was almost too much Trevor Slattery, you know, or was it just right? Um. I didn't think it was too much. Okay. Um, I don't know, really. I, I haven't had much thoughts about Travis Lattery. I was, um, it seemed a bit odd that he'd kind of got dressed up at the end fight yep. scene and was like standing at the front of the queue. And I was like, what's he going to do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, shouldn't he be in the back with the sort of, you know, the, the children yeah. and, the, uh, and, the elder, and the elderly? But um, that, that was the only thing, that was the only fault that I had about Trevor really. Um, yeah maybe it was a bit much i don't know but they needed some uh vehicle and i don't mean a car or a van but they needed a vehicle to get them to tao lao before when we and to get out of his his thing so that's kind of what they used wasn't it really and they really didn't close any ends with him in the movie either it was kind of like we saw him one one last shot you know them faking death during the battle so they weren't you know they wouldn't get killed and then we never saw him again even after they won so it, it was kind of an odd arc for him in the movie i thought I guess he stays in Tao Lao and just oh, yeah. and, and, and entertains them instead of entertaining uh, the Wen Wu. <laughs> yeah, Wen Wu, yeah. Or he's yeah. a sister's jester. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you never know. He might be back at the compound again, yep. mightn't he? So, um, so that big first end credit scene, 
Um, that was great to see Bruce as Bruce and then obviously seeing Carol again. With the longer uh, hair um, again. Yeah, longer hair. So the longer hair hairy. like in Captain, the first Captain Marvel, not the short hair like yeah. we saw at the end of Endgame. So, but yeah, the biggest thing, think, to, to, go ahead. No, 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 I was only going to talk about Captain Marvel's hair. It's not important to carry oh, on. Okay, well, I was going to talk about Bruce Banner. The biggest thing to me there was that his arm was still injured. So we know that injury sustained from him doing the snap is looks like it's permanent because him as Bruce Banner, he still had the, the arm brace on. It would look a, a different style brace. Maybe he is healing. Um, but it's interesting to see that he's back in full banner form because his arc was basically in um, in game that him and Hulk kind of came to an understanding after Infinity War where they were on opposite ends to become smart Hulk. And now he's back to banner. So it's going to be interesting to see again, when is she Hulk and what's his role in she Hulk? And if he's in smart Hulk form and something happens to bring him back to banner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to I'm glad that he's now back to banner because in my mind that means he's gonna go back to being Hulk at some point. And is he gonna go back to being a more savage version of Hulk? And are we gonna get a proper Hulk? Like World Breaker, Breaker Hulk? Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all together now. Yeah. <laughs> but that um, uh yeah, exactly so that, that post credits was interesting because Wong just shows up out of nowhere when they're out with their friends. And he's like, Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi. And he, you know, takes them back to look like the Sanctum, I think, or wherever he was at. Um, and the rings, once Shang-Chi used them and, and the rings went from blue to gold, it activated some beacon in them. Hmm. And so that's where, yeah, that's where Bruce Banner was there. And so was Captain Marvel to kind of say with Wong, you know, what's going on? And it pretty much cemented Shang-Chi as an Avenger at that moment. Hmm. Um, Shang-Chi and, and Katie pretty much. Yeah, that your lives you know. are going to change and all of yep. that. And they said about the um, the, they said how long did your dad have these rings? And he said a thousand years. And they said, well, it goes back. They they go back a lot further. Than yeah, that. like ten thousand years. Yeah, so. and Carol wow. didn't have any idea where they'd come from. And I really, when he um, Wong done whatever he did, and he basically separated the layers of the rings. Yep. Um, I mean, personally, I looked at that, and I mean, I don't know, my simple mind is thinking, well, Eternals is the next movie. Yeah. So Traditionally, yeah. traditionally, the end credit scene of a movie has set up the next movie or at least hinted towards it. The gold colors, we can see it in your background, Jari, and the gold colors. Um, is that some sort of nod? There was patterns in, in the rings. Is that some yeah. sort of nod to the, to the Eternals? It sends out a beacon that's really old. We know the Eternals and the Celestials are really old. Yep. Is that a beacon, something to do with why something woke up? I yep. don't know. So yeah, one one thing I thought: Does it call back a celestial to Earth? Because we we see in that once that one scene in the trailer of Eternals that Cersei's talking to the Judge, but she's like in modern day clothes. It seems like. So does that call in, you know, a celestial back to Earth? That was my first thought. My second was: Is that going to be with Fing Fang Foom and the 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 Mak, the Mak Luans, the alien race? You know, for Shang Chi too, mm. um, or. Does that go back to possibly Kunlun, Iron Fist, and one of the ancient cities? You know, it's another dimension, so that beacon can go out way out into space. But it was interesting, too, that all of a sudden Captain Marvel had to go. So, you know, that was yeah, also interesting. That was interesting, but that is very typical of, of Carol, though, isn't it? Yeah. She's done that a few times. Like, oh, um, I've got to go because I've got a whole universe to deal with. Yep. You know, she's done that before. So um, I thought that was very um, normal to, to see that happen. But um, yeah, but the funniest part of the post credit was they tied the post credit back to the beginning of the movie. So um, in the beginning of the yeah. movie, they're like, we could go home, be responsible, go to bed. Or and you, you see Katie <laughs> and, and Shang-Chi doing karaoke and getting getting blasted. Um, the same thing. Wong tells them, you know, go rest up. You know, you'll need it, blah, blah, blah. And they both and they both go or. And so then you see Katie, Shang-Chi and um, Wong seeing karaoke for the Hotel California you know, yeah. in a similar fashion to the beginning. So I kind of like how they, they brought that back to that. That was kind of, that was really funny. And then, and then the very last end credit scene, um, which I had to quickly Google as well. Like I, I was sitting in the theater and I was like, is there too? Cause I don't remember ever. I, I remember reading that somebody said the, the, the end credit scene in Shang-Chi will have you going, oh, wow. And I guess that's because of the Bruce and Carol thing and, yep. you know, and all of that. Uh, which did make me go, wow, you know, I was like, oh, look, Bruce. And then I, it took 
me a second to realise that he was Bruce. Like, and because and I, wait a minute, he's not green. And then and then obviously they then show Carol. Like, wow, like you know, I was like brilliant. I wanted one more. I really did want one more person. I wanted like yep. Rocket to show up or something. Yeah, um, that would have been or even really cool. or even like a like a Koye, Rody. yeah, or Rody or somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just some another one more person. It was like yeah. yes, yes, and it was like yeah. oh no, it didn't happen. Um, but uh, yeah, so the the I had to just sitting in the cinema and I was like, is there two? And then when I was reading it, and it was like, yeah, there is two. And then I was like, great, turn it off and we we'll just yep. sit down. And obviously, at the end of the movie, you've got uh, Jai Ling. Is that how yep, you pronounce her name? Yep. This stuff? I think so. I, I, I've been refraining from saying I don't want to butcher it, but I think that's how you say it. Yeah, Jai Ling, I think that was uh, it's not a bad effort from me, to be fair. I'm terrible with things like that. But um, she's taken over the, the Ten Rings organization. Yeah. Organization. Um, where they're going to go with that. And is it going to be a villainous organization? I mean, it looks a little bit villainous, but then who knows? Well, it's obviously been, uh, you know, uh, almost like gendrified <laughs> they've got graffiti all over the walls and it's a bit like modern isn't it you know so well a couple of things too about that i don't know if it's good or bad because it seemed like her and her brother once got past of him not coming back for her they were on good terms um yeah. and it seemed like maybe the 10 rings is kind of maybe in the middle maybe not really the good or the bad but they're kind of playing that fine line possibly because razor fist ends up joining them you know the new organization um, you see they're allowed letting females to train, which it looked like to me, were those widows and some of that training? Like maybe the widows, after, you know, that are I'm out sure. there still, you know, yeah, possibly because we, we saw a widow in the in the first fight scene. Yeah. Um, and so it looks like she's rebuilding her fight empire that she had early on when we first met her. So maybe there is a tournament that's going to go on there. Maybe that's how we see some other characters get introduced. Also, we'll we'll see that ties in. But, but speaking of, of Shang-Chi, too, uh, Feig on the press circuit said, I'm always confident and nervous in equal proportions. The early reaction to the characters and to Shang-Chi uh, Shang and the Legend of the Ten Rings itself gives me great hope that people will want to see more of these characters. We certainly have many ideas of where to take them and where to put them. And as exactly as you say, what's so fun, we know the movie's working when it's not just a title character that people ask about, but it is the co-stars or the supporting players that people ask about. And this movie in particular... That's heartening because we think they're spectacular and we think they have great potential in the future. So it does well, sound like it, it's coming. But the director also said um, that if you, if you don't have to look too deep in the comments for that first end credit scene about where it's going. Um, the director also said there was one setting that we weren't not able to do in this movie, but I won't say what it is because I really hope that we get to do it again in another film. Um, so it, it does sound like full steam ahead. There will be. We'll see more Shang-Chi in the MCU, whether that's um, Multiverse of Madness, whether it's Captain Marvel 2, whether that's No Way Home. Um, we will see them again, but it does sound like they're going to move full steam ahead with a sequel. Nice. I mean, we did get a uh, the Ten Rings Will Return image yep. right at the end as well after that last end credit scene. So, yeah, I think we can safely assume that we're going to see more of those characters. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know what? I thought uh, overall it was a, it was a decent movie. I, I, I quite enjoyed it. Yep. Uh, I, I would, I would watch it again. I'm looking forward to it coming on to Disney plus in 40 odd days now and uh, being able to see that again. So yeah, no, I, I, I was, um, I was, uh, I wouldn't say I was pleasantly surprised. I was probably pleasantly shocked to be honest, just because I didn't expect it to end up going where, where it went, but I knew that I was going to enjoy it because like I said, I love a good hand to hand fight scene yes. and there was load, there was loads of that in it. So for me, it kind of ticked what I like to see a in a movie. Um, and, uh, and it had all the sort of added extras that I look for as well. So, uh, yeah, I thought it was a really good, really good installment and I'm excited to hear what you think about it when you do see it, Alex, now yeah. that you've know, now that you know, pretty much everything about it <laughs> i genuinely am i'm excited to sort of understand like how your experience is now i think this is a this is almost like an experiment for anybody that's listening that well actually if anybody's listening you've also been spoiled but, um, <laughs> but this is almost like an experiment to find out like can you be totally spoiled with a movie like almost like told exactly what's going to happen when it's going to happen and then still enjoy it so, yeah yeah I, I'm going to be honest, like I saw when I saw Black Widow, I totally thought that movie was going to be a little bit different than, you know, the trailers and everything. So, you know, my my expectations for this one, like I, I they're all over the place, you know, so. 
Yeah, I was I was really hoping going in this was would be a good film, which it was. Um, I'm still disappointed in the comments about it, it being an experiment, whether it's out of context or out of context. This film was an experiment. It, it, to me, it's one of the better origin stories in the MCU. Um, and in some ways, it reminds me of, of Black Panther with some of the the family's the family drama, um, the visuals. Um, you know, all those things that we kind of saw in, in Black Panther a, as well. So in some aspects, it, it reminds me of that. But I think it's one of the more better origin stories in the MCU. Hmm. Yeah, very good. Very good. Looking forward to seeing more. Yep. I really like Shimmy really like Lou as well. I really like Shimmy yeah, Lou. I thought I you also. really good. And one last thing, too. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen this yet, there is a Marvel Legends episode out there now uh, for the Ten Rings. So the episode is called The Ten Rings. Um, it's basically Iron Man one, Iron Man three, uh, about the origin, uh, the organization of the Ten Rings, the Mandarin, um, all hail the King is tied into it as well. Um, and it has some shots for the real Mandarin and, Sh- and Shang-Chi also, Shang-Chi also, it's almost like a trailer at the end for, for Shang-Chi. So it's not very long, but it, it kind of has all those aspects in it. Um, so if you haven't seen that, that's out there on Disney plus. Nice. Nice. Oh, and Good the last job. thing too, um, October 17th, I believe, is the target date for this to be on Disney Plus. Hmm. Superb. The Excellent. movie that is not, not not the Legends episode, but the Shang-Chi movie. October yeah. 17th is kind of around the time frame. It should land on Disney Plus for those who can't see it yet. Superb. Superb. Good. All right. Well, um, so hopefully, if the people are, uh, are listening, they have uh, they've um, had a good rundown of shang chi and our opinions on it and broken a couple of uh, broken into a couple of little bits of um information from it and um, so we're going to crack on with um our usual bits and pieces now we're going to have a look at some news and some rumors and we're just going to have a little chat about some of those bits so hopefully we'll alex's voice is a little a little bit more now and <laughs> um, so for anybody that's now just turning on because they've skipped past the shang chi bit because they haven't seen shang chi hello um, we're gonna, um <laughs> welcome <laughs> welcome to the podcast yeah i'm andy um <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna crack on so jaren what have we had in the news world and let's see if we can um expand on a few of those pieces of uh of, of information so black panther 2 let's start with that wakanda forever um evidence points to julie julie louise dreyfus appearance in wakanda forever um there's some screenshots out there some screen caps of her it looks like she's recording some scenes for Wakanda forever. So Val looks like she's going to show up. Um, who is she recruiting? Is it uh, Ironheart Riri Williams? Is it someone else like uh, M'Baku? Um, you know, who knows? But it does appear that she is going to be in uh, Wakanda forever. Um, that's also, a surprising one. I didn't yeah. think we'd see her in that one. Yeah, so that's interesting. Also, too, it does sound like that Riri Williams it will have a bigger role than initially thought. So she could be a main piece of this movie. Um, the more I'm hearing about this from listening to other things out there, other, other read other news, it does sound like they are, you know, um, kind of ramping her up more than just an intro to the MCU that she might have a major part in this movie. Yeah, we thought that last week, didn't we? When we spoke yeah. about this, we were sort of saying maybe it was just going to be a quick hello, this is who she is, and then she's off again to do her own thing. But yep. it looks like, like you said, maybe she's got more. You know, I don't know what to expect anymore. I sit here and think I know what's going on, and then I see a movie like Shang Chi, and then I realize I don't. <laughs> yeah, so some of the news around that is said that the that um, it's un you know the rumor is that Wakanda Forever is a double header since it will feature both Dominique Thorne's Ironheart and Shuri together, potentially setting up former Disney Plus series. Um, so basically, Ironheart's Disney Plus series. Um, Shuri will become also this news is saying that Shuri is on a multi movie contract now to basically continue her role. So the, the teacher writes is a multi-movie contract now allowing her to continue her role beyond Black Panther Wakanda forever. So if her and Riri are having a double header type of thing in Wakanda forever, she may be a main piece in the Ironheart series as well, along with other things. Now also too around this news, it's starting to sound like that Shuri will be becoming the MCU's new Black Panther in the sequel. So whether she at the end of the movie is new Black Panther or over the course of the movie, it sounds like she'll be the new Black Panther for now. Mm. Which I'm, not, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I know at some point she will become it. And it, 
I just want to see how they'll do it because I almost think they're kind of there's too much in this movie to explain. It seems like, and I hope they just don't rush it um, because she wasn't that much of a fighter, mm-hmm. um, in you know in Infinity War and in Endgame and in Black Panther, their first one. So mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see you know if there's training during the five year snap when this movie is set, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm still hoping for a Killmonger angle in this film, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm. I gotta say, if that does happen, I think I may be a little bit disappointed. Yeah, for me, it just depends how they do it. You know, like I said, if, if they build her up over the film and at the end she takes the mantle, um, or when the film is set, it just be interesting to see. Or they make her all tech based, which I don't know if I'd like that or not. Maybe that's yeah, why. Got, yeah, I don't, yeah, but I don't do that. The yeah. Please don't do that. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Yeah. Well, the only reason why I say that is because if Riri Williams is having this big of a role maybe helps her design some kind of Black Panther type of suit, mm. possibly. Um, and maybe her fighting style is all tech, similar to the countermeasures that, that Tony had in Civil War against Cap. Um, so I don't know, but hopefully, I don't know, we'll see. I'm not going to judge it until I see it, but hopefully, you know, the way the movie's paced and the time frame and it all makes sense because there's a lot to explain in this film. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Alex? You hear that look on your face. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I was just sitting here. I was I was thinking to myself, you know, like it would be interesting if they did that whole like maybe maybe she helps Shuri, Shuri helps her, and they do that whole like you know kind of vibranium yeah. Iron Man suit crossover kind of type thing. Like you know, they each help each other build their yep. suits, their weapons, and everything. But I don't know how I like that either. You know, like it's it's I don't know. It's, it seems kind of rushed, and like it- you said. Yeah, and on your comment, I definitely think that Sherry will be the surrogate for Tony Stark in Ray Williams because in the comics, you know, Tony was kind of her, her mentor, kind of was what helped her come along, that kind of stuff. And with, with Tony being gone, I think Shuri, Shuri is definitely the surrogate in that role um, in the MCU. Yeah. I, I don't want to get into it too much because I know we discussed it a few episodes ago when Monty came on and I know that there's lots of strong thoughts out there, but... I, I'm probably gonna. I might even turn a load of people off now by saying this. Or I hope it comes across right. But like, I just don't understand why they couldn't recast T'Challa. Like, well, I get, I get, I do get that you want to honor a real person's life, but you can do that, and you can still like. He's not. He wasn't just T'Challa. Like, he was a real person who had a family and who had a whole career that spanned much more than four or. Five five appearances in some movies you know like he's not this it, it didn't have to be this way like they could have gone well you know what actors sadly like everybody die and pass and move on and do different things all the time you know like well what happens you know well just because just because um a certain person dies doesn't mean that character has to die you know, I mean, um, we're, we're, Sean Connery's died. It doesn't mean that James Bond has to die. Somebody else can play James Bond. You know, um, I don't. I just, I just don't. I don't agree with. I don't understand why. I, I get they needed to make a decision, and maybe out of respect they've done it. But I just don't. I don't think it should be the end. I don't think they should just say T'Challa's never coming back. T'Challa, like Monty said, T'Challa had forty years of history. In the in in Marvel, yeah, forty years, and he's basically had one. And I mean, if you added them all up, two movies, yep, you know, one movie to his own, and then added all of his other appearances up, all of his other time up, maybe he's had one and a bit movies. That's that's rubbish, if if I'm honest. And I don't disagree with you at all. You know, and, and there's some confusion around Feig's comments around this, whether it's just they're not going to recast him ever, or they're not going to recast him just for Wakanda forever. Um, I do hope at some point they they bring him they bring you know T'Challa back maybe as you know maybe Shuri holds it for a while and then we find out that him and um, Nakia had a kid and while that kid's being raised as the new Black Panther you know T'Challa Jr. or whatever um, th- there's that angle th- there's the multiverse angle um, I'm torn on I that hope, one I hope they don't do that one yeah really people yeah don't. people keep trying to use the multiverse to solve everything which I hope they don't overuse the multiverse um there's the whole killmonger thing that they could do with you know killmonger becoming good madam slay possibly being cast for, for that you know in the film 
going that route. Um, it'll be interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I hope it's not forever. I hope at some point they they do it, uh, mm-hmm. recast each other. And all respect to to Chuck Bozeman. And you know, I'm not gonna go too deep, but go back and listen to our episode with Monty how he explains all this. Um, but you got to do something at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just feel like T'Challa is a big character to not have in the, in, in the Marvel movies. And I don't, I, I, I don't know. I don't think that just killing T'Challa off is a, is, is a great way to honor Chadwick Boseman. Yep. Yeah. I just, I just personally don't. Other people might feel differently and that's cool. Yep. I get everyone's got their own opinion, but yeah. Anything anyway, on that, moving on. Yeah, but before I say moving on, anything, Alex, anything else on that? Oh, I was just going to say, you know, they they built up Wakanda all this time, too. So, you know, T'Challa is such an important person for Wakanda at this point. So not not having a T'Challa seems very I don't know, strange, you know, if if they choose to to swerve away from that. But yep. and possibly a much different looking Illuminati, too, if they ever do it. Yeah, yeah. But that's two people now that we won't mm-hmm. see in the Illuminati. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, moving on. Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Uh, so a couple things here. Uh, Mobius and Sylvie are rumored to appear now um, in that movie. Um, also, too, um, the half-brother of Thor, Balder the Brave, is also rumored to appear as well. So That's something to keep an eye on. Yeah, yeah, maybe just, I don't know, Multiverse and I don't know. Maybe it's something that's going to tie into Love and Thunder. We'll, we'll see. So... Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think I think almost anybody can turn up in Doctor Strange, Mark versus Man. Yeah. <laughs> well, we already know Captain Carter is already rumored to appear. So exactly, yeah. So X Men. I think, I think I could turn up to be yeah. honest. <laughs> I could turn up saying, "Hey, do a flip, Spider Man." <laughs> <laughs> oh God, for, what does he say in the past? Like, he's got he's got so many followers or something. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's recording it. The yeah. whole fight scene, he was cracking me up. And my wife saw that yeah. too, and she was just looked at me and was just rolling again because I, I told her what you guys said. In our at our group mod chat about that guy, me and that guy looking alike. <laughs> <laughs> so uh Hawkeye. Um come on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Avengers producer. <laughs> Sorry, I'm excited yeah. for it. No, you're I'm, fine. I'm, for it. I'm looking Sorry. forward. I'm looking forward to it as well. I'm, I'm waiting for that first trailer to drop or teaser or something. But uh Avengers producer uh Tren Tran um had some very interesting things to say about Hawkeye's premise. Um in an excerpt from TV Guide, her quote reads. The six episodes take place after the events of 2019 Avengers Endgame, uh, when the five-year disappearance of half the population, including Clint's wife and kids, was reversed. The city has, in many ways, uh, recuperated and continued thriving, but the same can't be said for all of its citizens. Um, so it looks like, you know, this might be a similar time as Falcon Winter Soldier, uh, WandaVision, Far From Home, Shang-Chi, somewhere in that in that area. Um it could be just right after the snap too, kind of like, you know, well, kind of like um, WandaVision um, and that kind of stuff. So that'd be interesting to see. Mm, yeah, I mean, I, I, we was talking about it the other week, weren't we? Um, about uh, the the Hawkeye run with Kate Bishop and um, and Clint Barton, Matt Fraction's run, and I really, really, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And I think if it can take some inspiration if the show can take some inspiration from that with their dynamic, I'm really, really looking forward to this show. And I really like Hayley Steinfeld as well. We've, we've just watched the, um, my, so my wife always moans that we have to watch loads. She doesn't mind Marvel movies. She doesn't, she doesn't, she actually quite likes it. And she comes to all of them with me. Yeah. She doesn't mind it, but she's got me and my two sons. So there's just her. She's the only female. So every now and again, she goes, let's put something on. I want to watch. <laughs> so she cheesy. So we watched the pitch perfect movies. Yep. Over the last uh, last weekend or the weekend before, I can't remember. And Hayley Steinfeld is in the second and third one of those, yep. and uh, and she's and she's in the Bumblebee movie, yep. isn't she? And she's been in a couple of other bits. And um, I really like her. I think she's really cool. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing that for, for yep. lots of different reasons. Um, I like Jeremy Renner as well. I know that there's some sort of controversy around Jeremy Renner and some of his personal life, but as far as I'm concerned, he's an actor, and I'll just watch him as an actor on the TV. Uh, on the on the screen, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to all guys. So whatever, yeah, throw it at me. Let's do it. So here's some big news too. It says it also sounds like Netflix characters in the MCU will get a soft reboot. Vincent D'Onofrio is said to make his proper MCU debut at some point in the first season. It also uh, it's also sound to think that Daredevil may appear in the show as well, in addition to his rumored stint in She-Hulk. 
Um, so soft reboot to me means that they're bringing the actors, the characters, but the stories are gone. So the whole, is it canon? Who cares? Because MCU is rewriting history now. It sounds like if they're going to be soft reboot. Yeah, so. exactly. That's exactly what we've been saying. And, and again, I know I haven't found that quote, but I'm almost positive. I've read a quote from Feige saying that if those characters were going to, or those actors were going to come over, they would play those characters, but not from that background. Yep. So that, that just confirms that again. So yeah. Um, and then uh, Venom, I mentioned this earlier, Let There Be Carnage. Um, first of all, it's going to be PG-13 rating uh, for the movie. Alex? Yeah, that, okay there? Was, yeah, yeah, I was, I was like, what? <laughs> his, his nose went up. He went out. Yeah, the reaction. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought that was a little odd. That yeah. Like PG-13. Okay. And then on the heels of Shang-Chi doing so well this weekend, um, they moved the release date again, but not back. They moved it up to October 1st. I personally think that they've done that not because of how well Shang-Chi's done, but because they know that we're probably going to end up in a bit of a state again come the winter. Um, and the longer they leave it, the more chance they've got of things going back into lockdown yep. because generally speaking, in the winter, people get iller. And I think if it's later on, there's more chance that theatres will be closed you know, than, than if they bring it this way. Which, which doesn't, sound, it this way. doesn't sound good for No Way Home then. No. No, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know that. I'm just, that's I'm, I'm just saying, based on that logic, that means no way home. Based, yeah. Exactly. You, so. you think, I mean, when, look, when he's flu, when he's flu season, when he's flu season anywhere, it's in the winter, isn't it? It's in, you know, so I, I'm, we don't, I don't want to get into a coronavirus conversation, but it is, it is a flu. So it is a version of that, isn't it? So if it's going to get worse, it's going to get worse in the winter. So I think they've brought that movie forward so there's more chance or longer for people to go and see it before any potential problems occur with uh, a rise in cases and uh, closures happen. That's my opinion on it. Yeah. So on. Secret Invasion. Um, produce, uh, Shang-Chi producer Jonathan Swartz is developing Secret Invasion for Disney Plus series. It also started filming last week in London as well. I, so, I did see that. I did mm-hmm. see that. I mean, I'm, I might have to get on a train. It's only like 30 minutes from me on a train. I might have to go and see if I can poke me up, poke my nose around and see what's happening. There's not many people in London at the moment. Everyone's working from home, so it's quite quiet. So I might have to get down and have a look and see where they're recording. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's really, uh, again, another project I'm really looking forward to, Secret Invasion. Yep, how they do it and is, is Taylor's good or bad? You know, does it end up being bad? Do we get Super Scrolls, you know? All that's going to be interesting. I saw someone today on the group, and I can't remember who it was, but I did agree with what they said. They said that Ben Mendelsohn, ben Mendelsohn plays a really good villain yep. um, and that turning Talos good was a big mistake. And I was like, I don't necessarily disagree with turning that like any character good, but having Ben Mendelsohn play someone good when he could have played a villain, I, I agree. I think that was a mistake. Because he was because in, I, he was in Rogue One, right? Yeah. Yes, that was in Rogue One. Okay, I, I can remember. Was, and he was outstanding in that. I mean, really, like, almost, like nasty, almost. Like, I, you hate him, and yep. that's what you want, isn't it? That's what you want from a villain. And I, and I totally agree with whoever that person was. If he's listening, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. I can't remember what post it was on, but I do totally agree with that person. That actually, to have Ben Mendelsohn as almost like a bit of a soft goodie as well. Like he's not even really a, you know, not really hardened either. Um, I think it was a waste. I, I'd like to have seen him as a real baddie. He's also really good. There's a Netflix series about a family in Florida where they own like a, like a touring and like a, um, a bed and breakfast and, and boat type of thing. He's a brother. He stars in the series with Kyle Chandler from Friday Night Lights TV series. Um, and he's really good in that series. I'm going blank on the series, but he's really good in that series as well on Netflix. So, cool. Um, so, Blade News. Um, Basim Tariq confirms Blade job. So, there have been rumors that he's going to be the you know the director of Blade and so forth, but he has confirmed it now that he will be directing Blade. Um, he promises the reboot will pay respect to Wesley Snipes' trilogy. Um, and also, too, I don't know if you saw this on Twitter, it was trending about Blade and Wesley Snipes because Everyone kept saying the Spider-Man films is, is what got all this started, but it's like, nope, it was the Blade films uh, because 
Blade was like one of the first big uh, MCU films out or not MCU, but Marvel films out there to kind of start this whole path down the rest of the Marvel films. Yes, mm. Spider-Man films did help it, but Blade was the first. Mm. So Wesley, Wesley Snipes. Yes. What a man. What a man. Passage oh, to 57. If you've never seen Passage yes. to 57, go watch that. That's <laughs> awesome. Do you play roulette? No. <laughs> um, anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, so hopefully uh, we'll see some kind of cameo for Wesley Snipes. There's been some off and on talks about him being involved in some capacity. Um, so we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Be kind of cool to see him like Dracula or something like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah, yeah. Some kind of like really old villain or something like that. So uh, we have some uh, Captain Marvel 2 news. Um, Captain Marvel 2 slash what if. I'm not going to go deep into what if. This is only going to be it pertains to uh, Captain Marvel. Um, the producer teases Ronan the Accuser's possible return. She said, I'm a big fan of Ronan, I'm a big fan of Lee Pace, and I would never say never. Um, so that means to me there's possibly some flashbacks because remember in Captain Marvel, when the Kree and Ronan showed up to Earth and she basically made them leave, he says, We'll be back for the weapon. Um, so I wonder if there's some flashbacks um of Captain Marvel or maybe some some time on her adventure adventure of uh, adventures um that we haven't seen yet um in the you know over her course of the mcu so what um where is ronan now he's dead when yeah when wait who killed him yeah uh, this, Guardians uh, of the galaxy the, pa- the power stone yep yeah, yeah i'm just i was sitting here my head was spinning for a minute because obviously we've seen captain marvel but that was a flashback wasn't it and then yeah, yeah he's dead they he, he gets split obliterated by the power yep. stone doesn't he yeah 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 cool. so it have, yep. have to be some kind of in between her travels or flashback maybe they show back up to earth again or they try to encounter her when she's out in space hmm. uh once she leaves earth remember after captain marvel she went off to help the um the scrolls find a new home and find That's other right. scrolls so yeah yeah i like i like some lee pace as ronan as well yep and he had a he had a big part in um in the comics for well he's had all sorts of different images um and sort of iterations in the comics over the years hasn't he and yep. um, it'd be it'd be a shame to sort of not see him again so yeah that's, that'd be cool and and some of this also too from her talking about him repairing it could also be in what if as well as another option mm-hmm. so that's where the what if news comes from that possibly could see him in what if in season two him voicing ronan's character um other casting news from captain marvel 2 Park Su Su Jun, hopefully I says correctly, he's confirmed his role now in the Marvel film. So he's he's actually confirmed to be in the uh, the film, but he won't give details. Um, there's rumors of Marvel Boy. There's rumors of Braun um, slash Amadeus Cho. Um, so we'll see what happens with his role. Cool. Uh, more M- Marvel stuff. Miss Marvel news. Miss um, Marvel parents and brother will also be in the Marvels. So we know they're in, they're in the Miss Marvel series on Disney Plus, but they're also going to be in the Marvel's movie as well, Captain Marvel Two. And um, we still haven't got any new any any updates about that, have we? Nothing. No, but because it, it got so, pushed back. So yeah, well, yeah, but they didn't they didn't actually say that. It, I I don't remember actually seeing anything confirmed. So yeah, it's, it's been rumored to be pushed, pushed back. back. Yeah, rumor. Yeah, that's it. But so. it, but it obviously has been pushed back. I've was there's no way they wouldn't have said anything by now, but yeah, which is a bit weird. And, and I always find that a little bit, cause they must know that there's this level of fandom out there. So like, I don't know. I just find that a little bit patronizing and not that, we, I mean, I don't know who are we to say, or oh, they should tell us if it's being delayed yeah. so that we know, you know, that sounds a bit stupid, but I do kind of agree with that though. I'm yeah. sort of sitting here going, well, actually it would be nice to know if it was delayed. Cause you've been telling us for the past two years that it's coming out late 2021. We're all sitting there looking at our watches going, well, hold on, we've only got a few weeks left and you've not said anything. Um, and although it's not that important, you know, nobody's going to die if it doesn't get released. Well, remember be- too, that Disney plus day is coming, uh, I think October, November. So maybe we'll find more then if, if we don't find anything before then. Yeah. November the 14th. Or yeah. Something like that. I remember something like that. Yeah. But anyways, time. with, with this, go ahead, Alex. I was just gonna say the time constraints on that is really worrisome too, because mm-hmm. it's like you know nothing overlaps really with any of Disney's stuff. Like every once in a while, you know, we've gotten the movie and the TV shows yep. now, but you know, we never have. I TV don't think shows. we've ever had TV shows overlap. So you know, mm-hmm. there is there is just about I think there is six weeks, isn't there, between what if finishing and Hawkeye starting? But that I mean that means that. Miss Marvel's got to come out during Eternals in four weeks. In four weeks yeah. tomorrow, yeah. 
so we'll see. Yeah. It, but I don't think it certainly won't. It can't. We haven't seen anything. So, but my question here though is, is will Miss Marvel TV series lay the groundwork for the Marvels? Because if her parents are coming over to it as well, and her brother, we'll see. And this is how it, this is how this news came out because the actress and, and I, don't, I hope I'm not butchering her name, Zenobia Shroff, uh, who plays her mother in in Miss Marvels and also now in the Marvels. Talks about filming in London where the Marvels is being filmed, along with the actors who play the father and brother in Miss Marvel series. So that's where that t- tidbit of news came from because her Instagram post. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so interesting. E- Eternals, uh, first of all, uh, Eternals, I got two trailers during um, Shang-Chi. It was the first trailer and the last trailer of all the trailers shown during Shang-Chi. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> Was that the only two trailers you got? No, um, it was uh, Shang Chi twice, uh, Far From Home, the new. I'm sorry, um, No Way Home. Eternals twice. Eternals twice, No Way Home, Ghostbusters, and the new James Bond movie. I've seen that new James Bond trailer yeah. about a billion times. <laughs> <laughs> he said they've changed it as well because it says something like um, the wait is over at the yep. beginning as well, and that that movie's been. I think it was it was filmed about ten years ago, wasn't it now? And it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that, but, uh, yeah, that's interesting that you got both, both trailers yep. on the, uh, on Shang-Chi. Nothing new, but seeing those on the big screen was a lot better than seeing it on, on the computer or on a phone. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. We saw, I, we had, um, we had Eternals in the front of, in front of the second trailer. Yep. So that was, yep. That was pretty cool. I've got, yeah, again, I've got a feeling that's going to be, uh, that's going to be huge on a big screen. And speaking of Eternals, um, the fate will be decided in two to three weeks. All eyes are on Shang-Chi, which we know now with it doing $100 million by now, that it looks like they're probably going to stay the course with Eternals. But um, the news was about this, that uh, moving forward, uh, Eternals has three routes. Um, release exclusively in October in the theaters. Um, release a later date exclusively in the theaters. Or do a hybrid release on its planned drop. So all eyes are on, have been on Shang-Chi, which right now we probably during this time have already passed hundred million with it. It might be staying put because of the, the strong performance by Shang-Chi. Do you, it, it's finished, isn't it? Eternals. Yep. It is finished. It's totally finished. It's finished through post-production and all of that stuff as well. I, do you know what? I reckon they'll move it forward. You think so? Yeah. Well, maybe, really, maybe really after do. what if is done, we'll see it. Yeah. I really think they'll move it forward because I, like, like I said before, I think there's more risk of everything closing back down or at least some restrictions coming into play as the year goes on and as the weather gets colder. Yep. Um, and and and, I, and if it's finished, because usually at this point, how, how far are we out? We're still two months out pretty much, aren't mm-hmm. we, from Eternals? If a film had, had, obviously this has been recorded a long time ago and it's delayed because of coronavirus, but if we was two months out from a movie without any pandemic there'd still be some post-production work left on it, I think, wouldn't there, with two yeah. months left. So they wouldn't be able to move it forward. But I, I, do you know what? I'm, I'm thinking, I reckon, after seeing what they've done with Venom and my logic behind why, I reckon we might end up getting Eternals before. Like um, possibly two weeks after Venom? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Because they're not going to yeah. this month. It's not going to be September. No. And with Venom being October 1st, I'm sure Disney and Sony have some kind of have um, some kind of agreement about the release schedule with all this stuff. So my guess would be two weeks after after yeah. um, Venom or late October. When did you say uh, the, uh, um, Shang-Chi could be coming on Disney Plus? Did you say the, the 17th, 17th of October? Of October. Yeah. It'll be after that. Yep. I reckon it'll be very shortly after that because they won't want to release two Marvel movies in, a stu- in the in the theaters at the same time. Well, let me, let me so see they'll wait. They'll wait till one. They'll wait till one's gone and then they'll release the next one as soon so as possible. October seventeenth is a Sunday. Um. So if it goes by that date, my guess would be twenty first, twenty second, maybe. Hmm. For Eternals in the movie theater, they'll, they'll bring so, it forward a week. I reckon yeah. that's my that's my. I'm, I'm putting I'm putting it out there. They're going to bring Eternals forward to the end of October. So um, Angelina Jolie on joining Eternals. Uh, this was the reason I wanted to make the film. It was to be part of such a diverse family. And it really didn't matter to me what the size of the role would be. So that was hers. And then Lauren Ridoff. Um, what surprised me the most about joining the MCU and working with Chloe um, was gra- well, how grounded she was. And that, that's the, the director. Um, 
the first time the cast met, she was barefoot and sat on the floor. Uh, it was through the first meeting that we discovered that we perceived ourselves as geeks and misfits. So that connected us all and added another layer to the story of Eternals. It was our quirks and differences that became our superpowers. Uh, Chloe uh, is the great equalizer. Even though this was a massive star-studded cast she's working with, she treated us with the same amount of attention and care. And then Samuel Hayek on working with Jolie. We didn't start out uh, when there were a lot of distractions. Uh, when we started out, you showed up and you, uh, you better pay attention. Um, and we both have a lot of curiosity about all aspects of filmmaking. Cool. I have a yeah. visitor. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> um, yeah. Good. <laughs> actors, <laughs> actors seem to be pleased about working on Marvel movies um, and big actors at that as well. You know, Selma Hayek, Angelina Jolie. I don't think um, I don't think it's any surprise that they're pleased about working on a Marvel movie. I mean, I think everyone wants to get on it, don't they, pretty much? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're starting to see a lot of big names, you know, show up in Marvel movies. You know, ever since the beginning, since phase one, I mean, the amount of big names has completely grown, you know, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah you got more you know, people as... wanting to be in the MCU, too, so. I mean, speaking yeah. of, speaking of yeah, that, exactly, look, yes. look at uh, Zachary Levi, that article I posted to the group. He wants to have a bigger role in the MCU. He's on a huge role right now with Shazam, and he had that that small MCU role as a, as Vandral um, in Thor, uh, The Dark World, and in Thor um, Ragnarok. But now he wants a bigger role in the MCU. So mm, yeah, yeah, no, that's it. Well, why not? But well, why wouldn't you? It's a it's a bit of a um, bit of a payday, I should imagine. Yeah. And he wouldn't be the first person that they had brought back for multiple roles either. In yep. that case, you know. Look come on, Cersei. Frank Grillo. From, come on, Frank Grillo as Punisher. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Gemma Chan's probably the biggest one that has played dual roles in the MCU with her playing. Um, uh, I'm going blank from Captain Marvel, her name. Minerva. Oh, yeah. Minerva, thank you. I was yeah. going blank. And now her playing Cersei in Eternal. So um, th there's, you know, other actors too that have played multiple roles. Even even um, Benedict Cumber Cumberbatch has played, he voiced um, Dormammu. Um, Dormammu and played Doctor Strange. Then you have uh, Peter Parker's teacher, you know, from Spider-Man movies and also Incredible Hulk. So it, it's no different, you know. And we've so. just had, and we've just had uh, Shang-Chi's aunt as well. Yep. Um, played, I can't remember what the lady, the lady's name was, the original, um, one of the original Guardians. Yes, uh, one Maybe of the Ravagers. Green. Yes. Yeah. Can't remember what the name is, but yep. yeah, anyway, she did. Um, so No Way Home. Um, IMAX trailers show that the police station scene where everyone thinks it's Charlie Cox, Matt Murdock, Matt Murdock isn't him. The trailer shows part of the face and doesn't appear to be him. He's still were to appear, and it doesn't mean he's not in it. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was never expecting that to be him anyway, to be totally honest. But it'd be interesting though, how if he just plays, you know, Matt Murdock and he's basically a lawyer, you know, will he be a contingency plan by Stark? Um, someone that Happy knows, or even Aunt May through her her uh, her work that she does. Maybe maybe Aunt May knows Murdoch through that whole thing that she does with the pin the pamphlets out and her whole foundation that she works with. Um, it'd be interesting I to think... see how he he it ties into this story. Like not just some random lawyer. Someone has to know him. I think. Do you think? See, I don't think that. I think that you know, based on what we know of 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 Matt Murdoch and if they want to at least pay a little bit of homage to the Netflix shows without, without um, uh, recognizing them that, you know, he was always after the little man, like we said last yep. week, Alex, didn't we, that he, he was doing jobs for free in yeah. the Netflix series. So if, if Peter Parker, is still the little man still living in a crappy little flat and still hasn't really got any money apart from a nice suit, um, you know, why wouldn't he help him out? based on what we already know of the Matt Murdock from the Netflix series. And that's so, why that's I why I like the Aunt May angle, because she does sounds like some kind of nonprofit or some kind of social services type of foundation. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the tie could come from, possibly. If there is a tie, I could see yeah, that as, as the probably that angle there. If he's even in it. <laughs> no, I, I, I think he's in it. I, I At this point, I think he's in it. Just from everything out there, I, I think he's in it. He's, he's, he's not in the trailer, but I think he's in it. Be crazy to see him possibly in She Hulk or No Way Home. You know, I'm yep. saying like, like if he appeared in both, I would lose my mind. Like, <laughs> you know, 
And speaking of Daredevil, um, these rumors are gaining steam that he will have two different suits in the MCU. So when we see him in She-Hulk, he will have the red and yellow suit. And then we see him in Echo, he will have the all red suit like he had in the TV series. I love, do you know what? Right? I've just, we've basically just made a conversation for the last 15 minutes about nothing because nobody has said anything. It's just all speculation. And we're talking about what suit he's going to wear in what particular <laughs> show. <laughs> it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Like, it's, nobody said anything. It's just what like hearsay, isn't it? And I think yeah. it's mad how we, uh, this is, this, this, these conversations can grow out of just a word. One person can say one word and that's it. Like it spirals into this whole big theory and like you know we're talking about uh, how's this going to happen how's that going to happen what suit are they going to wear and it's like are they going to wear this one and this one and this one and this one it's like hold on a minute nobody said anything yet yep. <laughs> it's insane um well yeah uh, I, i'd like to see, i'd like to see yet yeah, the, the the suit with the yellow in it actually and the uh the last piece of news before we get to what if um because there's some what if news but the last piece of news is that there is now a poster for the infinity saga in all the movies on Disney Plus. With that being said, because of contractual distribution obligations, the Spider-Man homes and or the Spider-Man movies and the Incredible Hulk movie are not included in it. I did see what was included in it though, and and this goes back to the Black Panther two news earlier on. A big Shuri was in yep. it, bigger than Black Panther. Yep. Black Panther was up at the top, quite small, and Shuri was down at the bottom, quite foreshadowing. Big, quite, Quite obvious, yeah. Well, we said we spoke, we said before, haven't we? You know, I mean, and again, we go back to talking about rumors and Black Panther two, and he's he's Michael B. Jordan going to be reprising as Killmonger, and are they going to try and you know um, play that redemption arc? But the the what if episode that we're going to get in a few weeks' time, obviously, uh, with him, looks like they're trying to turn the cogs on whether he's a good guy. Yep. So are they starting to lay those, those that foundation down for us to be prepared when we go into a movie that he's going to be a good guy in the same way that are they showing us this poster with Shuri as like, look, here's Shuri. Look, she's big on this poster. You know, she's which, one of the main people going forward. Which will be interesting to see because when they do Black Panther, who's the Black Panther? Is it T'Challa? Because I know T'Challa has done multiple episodes or is it Killmonger? I'm, I'm asking this because there is a trailer scene where they show the new basically uh, guardians of the multiverse lining up and star Lord is T'Challa star Lord, but there's also black Panther in that scene. And that's where we see Gamora Ah. as well with Thanos' armor and Thanos' weapon from Endgame. So will we have two T'Challa's in that scene or will the black Panther in that scene be Killmonger? It's, so, it's the last one, isn't it? Apparently, that's the last one. Yep, the very last one against Ultron, Apparently. and Ultron yeah. gets all... I think it's rumored that Ultron gets all the Infinity Stones. He has the Mind Stone in his head and the rest in his chest, I think, what I read somewhere. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah, so... I want to see that live action. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see Ultron come back. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. And, and come back properly as well. Like, yeah. I, don't, I, I, didn't, I didn't mind what we saw of him in Age of Ultron, but I just don't... He was a bit... He was still a bit... I don't know. I don't know it's just a bit weak from what... From easily defeated yeah almost yeah. well just a story too because ultron's always tied to pym you already know yeah. in the cartoons mm-hmm. and the comics and this one it was it was stark and banner that mm-hmm. created the murder bot um so if you're interested to see yeah. if they do ultron proper does like hank pym pick up ultron you know five or whatever he called it in, in some of the times um or some of the stories um so it'll be interesting to see Mm. Wasn't it in Homecoming? They had like a Ultron head that they that, that Peter Parker found in that warehouse or whatever. So yeah. you know that there's still like Ultron stuff out there. You know what I'm saying? Like there's still mm. bots and things. So. Yeah, you're right. And it had and and also in the bag. So in that same bag, there was an Ultron head, and there was the uh, the key that Ultron was using to turn the yep. cog for that mm. machine that dropped Sokovia. So, so yeah, that that whole thing was was kind of alluded to. Yeah, yeah, what's uh, Stark's cleanup company called? So he has, he might have all that stuff somewhere. His, his cleanup company that they were stealing stuff from? Uh, damage control. Yeah, damage yeah. control. So, and as, you know, so they're probably thought there's somewhere a bit mm. with all that stuff. Mm. Yeah, definitely, for sure. So what if? Um, first thing is, uh, it looks like we're getting zombies tomorrow. Yes. Uh, yes. So it's going to be cool. And we, we, we think that um, Party 4 is going to be partying in Vegas. 
<laughs> Maybe something, some, somebody was saying in, yeah. this, in the same episode. So uh, yeah, that that actually sounds like right, doesn't it? Like Thor, if we're looking at Thor, like um, from Endgame at the beginning of Endgame, like can you imagine like if zombies attack? Can you imagine what he would do? He would <laughs> he wouldn't care. He would just go and have some beers in a casino, wouldn't he? That's exactly <laughs> what he would do. Bottle service, so, yeah. everything. I love that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, just just every now and again, just knocking a zombie away like that. Just knocking another. Another. No. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah. Smashing a zombie away and shouting another. Um, yeah, so, yeah, no, that's cool. I'm looking forward to that. That'd be really fun. So so the, the, the other news here is that What If has a big overreaching, overarching storyline yet to be revealed. So these are all all connected. Um, according to the show's producer or pr- production designer, Paul uh, Lassign, obviously with it being an anthology series, each episode is a standalone, but there's an overarching story which will become more without giving spoilers. Um, you will see that there's a big storyline going on. And then um, Jeffrey Wright hints at big changes coming for the Watcher because up until this new ep- latest episode, the Watcher has only observed there was no two-way communication which we'll mm. get to here in a second when we talk about the uh, Doctor Strange episode. Yeah. Um, but Jeffrey Wright says it's a shift in attitude for him. Um, and it's a shift in purpose and intent and all of that stuff for him. That's a fun gear shift to play. And he also becomes less disembodied for audiences too. That's the moment in which he steps into these worlds a little bit closer and steps a little bit closer to the audience as well. That's his moment where he knocks on the door. The Watcher is compelled by the danger that Strange is conjuring, obviously not only for himself, but this whole reality. Uh, for the Watcher, there's so much he can only watch. He's not a voyeur for voyeurism's sake. He's in some ways made up of these characters. Without them, what does he watch? He profoundly compelled by them, and maybe there's only so much he can take. We'll see. And I guess the question is, how reliable a narrator is the Watcher? How trustworthy um, can we be of his description of himself and the rules that he says he abides by? We'll see. And so that was a very interesting quote from Jeffrey Wright about the Watcher, um, because we find out in the latest episode that before we get, you know, I'll, I'll stop there, but we'll talk about that in a minute. The last bit of news about what if before we get into the episode is that Marvel to adapt Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow movie for what if season two. There's an episode that is based on one of the movies that literally just came out with the woman with the red hair was the quote. <laughs> From the production uh, designer. That's the best that Marvel could yeah. come up with after this, after the uh, mess that was happened with uh, between those two parties. Blimey. Yeah, that'd be fun. I mean, yeah. I wonder where they will go. Here you go, Joan. You might get a proper Taskmaster. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get me started. Um, Anyways. No, wait, no <laughs> yeah, anyway, what if? Uh, no, good. Okay, so so lots of little pieces of news there. But again, as always, lots to discuss. And like like I was saying, you know, it, it only takes one rumor, it only takes one word. And, you know, nerds like us can sort of just extrapolate any kind of information we want from it, really. But then that's what's fun, yep. you know. And, um, you know, it's been, I know it's been said before in the group, you know, people have come in and go, oh, why can't you just, you people just, watch the movies and or just wait for the movies to come out before you talk about them it's like because this is part of the fun like yeah. talking about and theorizing and wondering and guessing and you know making um what's the what's the um what's the the saying that someone uses um about joining the invisible dots yep um yeah know, connecting the invisible, the invisible dots, dots. yeah yeah, connecting the invisible dots. Um, that, that's that's fun. That, well, that's fun for us anyway. You know, and if it's not fun for you, then that's yeah. fine. That's okay. Does, you don't, doesn't need to be fun for you. It's not a law. So, um, but it's fun for us. So that's what yeah. we like doing. Like I, I was um, happily, so that's su- cool. I was happily and surprised, surprised wrong a lot about my Shang Chi theories or Shang Chi theories. So, yeah, you know, I'm fine but with that. But that's but that's good though, isn't it? Because if you went in there and you knew absolutely everything, you would kind of. You, well, I don't know. Alex will tell us next week, I guess. <laughs> now he knows absolutely everything. We'll see if he enjoys it or not. Um, okay, so last little bit of a uh, business to attend to before we uh, before we call a day on this one is to talk about last week's episode of uh, What If, the Doctor Strange one. Um, obviously, I appreciate that most people are going to be listening to this on Wednesday, potentially even Thursday, after we've seen Marvel Zombies. Um, but, you know, um, we'll, 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 we'll have a chat about it anyway. Um uh, uh, what a hard hitting episode uh, it was. Um, 
really, I could see where it was going from the beginning, but that didn't make it any less effective. Um, and it also made me think a little bit more about Infinity War, about what he did in Infinity War. Because um, obviously they, there's a moment in there where um, the uh, the guy that was guarding the, the place, I can't remember what he called him now, but he, he's old when he comes back. And he's, he said, you've spent centuries, you know, trying yeah. to find this. And it kind of made me think about what Doctor Strange did in Infinity War when he went forward and he saw those timelines. And I've been saying it for a while that did he, okay, he might not have lived every minute of every single one of those timelines, but it, it couldn't have been instant for him. Like he couldn't, I mean, he looked, he saw 14 million, million. 605 yeah. possible futures. I mean, even if it took him a second for every single future, that, there's still 14 million seconds. I'm not quite sure how many years that is, but it's got to be a lot. Um, so he's got to have spent a long time going forward in those futures. And I think it's been pointed out that he um, that he calls Tony, Tony, after that happens. Before that happens, he calls him Stark, doesn't he, all the time. And then afterwards, he calls him Tony. Well, probably because he's lived through so many different futures with Tony. And that was reflected in what he did with Christine in the mm -hmm. show, which was um, which was quite it. Like I say, it was hard to watch. Actually, you saw his breakdown, didn't you? And it was interesting too that they took away, they changed her dying instead of him losing his hand. So we we saw the car accident, um, but instead of him losing his hands, like we saw in his movie, basically she passed away, and that's what set him on his path. Yeah, and I actually liked the absolute point in time thing being like her death, you know, yeah. like even even when he doesn't show up, she still dies yep. and there's like nothing he can do to stop it. I mean, he literally tries just not everything. going. Yeah, everything. I mean, he just comes up with new ideas and never works. So. Yeah, I, I really like that concept, actually, Alex. I agree. I really like that there's certain bits of time that every timeline or whatever he's going to go through. So it, it, you've got all these like you know got hundreds of thousands millions of different timelines but every single one of them every now and again goes through the exact same point and then they branch out again and then they go through the exact same point again so it's a little bit like what we were saying in um what we've said over the past couple of weeks about what ifs mm -hmm. that there are there do seem to be there does seem to be this sort of little crossover points where it's almost identical to what's happened in the MCU and then it splits off and it's completely different. And then all of a sudden again, something happens and it's almost identical again. So they're almost, that's a sort of a similar concept that there's certain things that have to happen that will always happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's um, definitely parallels and like things that are intertwined almost, you know, e even with some of the endings, you know, um, in some of the what if episodes, but yeah. Mm. It's also yeah, interesting to see that the ancient one back as well. Yeah. You know, to, to kind of warn him and, and, and be there and even try to like fight, stop him basically um, in his in his quest. And then all those creatures that he was basically defeating and absorbing was very interesting, too. Mm -hmm. so, Alex, was it you that was saying the other day that you you paused the, the, the show on every one of them to see if anyone was relevant? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I actually because like so I had I had some weird kind of ideas like uh there was that one dragon that he absorbs. I thought about uh, Surtur's realm, you know, like I was like, is that like a fire dragon mm -hmm. from there? Um, the gnome, you know, that could be from a couple of places. But I also thought of, uh, I cannot remember the name, but I, it's like the realm that Merlin's from. Yep. It's like Elseworld or something like that, you know, something like that. Um, so I was like, maybe, maybe it's from there. Maybe, you know, it could be related to Asgard. You know, you never know. Um, nine realms and whatnot but yeah like i kind of just went through it and i was like man I, I can't really like pin down really very many of these and then you get to the bug with the cloak that he takes the cloak from the bug and i was like he's like oh no i don't like bugs but i'll take your cloak you know you're just like wow all right like, yeah the way yeah. to put that in yeah it's also interesting too that the tentacle features show back up again um yeah. and i've been reading and i haven't confirmed yet but i keep seeing rumors that that's the same tentacle creature from the first episode but it's not Shuma Garath. Um, it's a new creature for the show. So we'll be interested to see if that creature shows up again, if we see the creature in the MCU and Multiverse of Madness, um, or any of these creatures that we saw in that scene, if they mm. show up in the MCU, Multiverse of Madness or somewhere else. 
that seems to be the first thing that's linked any of the any of the episodes together. That creature, yep. that seems to have linked the first and the fourth episode. You know, that was a, it. Was it was that you could tell it was the same thing, and it was it, it, how could it not be? I mean, it's it's too similar to not be the same thing. And why would they? It's in the almost an identical situation, mm-hmm. so it has to be the same thing. Otherwise, you're like, well, hold on, how many of these things that are like that are there? But um, yeah, no, no, that'd be interesting to see if that shows up again, actually. Yep. That'd be, I've, I've got a feeling we might see that again tomorrow. The, the biggest thing, though, is that the Watcher interfered in a way because yes. Strange could hear the Watcher. He could converse with the Watcher and he pleaded for the Watcher to, to fix to help him fix this. Um, but he wouldn't. And, and the Watcher was almost he was almost annoyed. Yes. Weren't he? You know, yep. and, and, and that's the first time you've you've seen any kind of emotion from him rather than just sort of a bland watcher, just this sort of emotionless being that just watches what goes on. Um, and you actually saw him like he was almost angry with strange of what he'd done. Like, you know, you've done this, you've, you've broken all of this. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like at the end where he's trapped, it's like, is the watcher saving him for something later to, to basically free him to help with something almost in a way. Bring him over to another timeline or something, yep. you know? Yeah. Maybe the guards of the multiverse. Yeah. Uh, had he had he put himself in like a mirror dimension? Strange. In, yeah. in that little moment, because it was all sort of triangles around him, wasn't it? And I don't like a prism what, type of thing, almost. Yeah, like yeah. almost just to protect him and Christine, although Christine had gone. And yeah, I don't know, but yeah, that was um, that was uh, that was that was that was quite hard to watch actually. And I, do you know what? I really liked that there wasn't that sort of happy, packed up little ending, um, because. Uh, I think one of not that you need not that I don't think you need stakes to make things interest make things interesting, but I think one of the complaints from the T'Challa the Star Lord episode was that the stakes were very low, um, so it didn't mean as much as you was going through it, you know. Um, so this I don't the stakes were about as high as they could be. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you know the entire universe is <laughs> is going to be destroyed. Um, so, uh, and it was nice that it was destroyed. Uh, do you know what I mean? Like yep. it, it was it, it, because it was like, oh, wow. Like what if that actually did happen? Like in the MCU, like we'd all be like, that, oh, that's a little taster about if that happened. And what was interesting too, is that, uh, Wong warned him again. He still went and did it, but then we circled back to that scene, um, where he listened to Wong and walked away, but the evil strange grabbed the good strange. And that's how they got into their whole big fight um for strange to fully get his power so that was interesting yeah that was uh, and, and it was interesting to hear what the ancient one had said that she split him yep yeah into two different what did she say is that two different timelines in the same universe yeah. or yeah. something like that something yeah. like that yeah something then, like that then she talked about how you know important it was that how almost detrimental to the main timeline that was that you know she she had split him but you know and he even mentioned it himself. He was like, you know, isn't that dangerous? But yeah, you know, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah. It was uh, it was it was a tough episode to watch. Actually, I think for a lot of reasons, but mm-hmm. um, I think a very necessary episode as well. Yes. So, like I said, I think it, it's it's good that not all of these things are ending with a rosy little packed up ending. Um, it, it, even. Like, it- Oh, my bad, Andy. Go no, ahead. go on, man. Go. Uh, I, was, I was just going to say, even the, the ending where he's got that monstrous like appearance, you know what I'm talking about? Where yep. like he's like he's absorbed all those entities and they're starting to like poke out and yep. like, stick through and, and stuff. And he's like talking to Christine and he's like, oh, you know, it's me. It's me. And he looks like a monster, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. Mean, yeah. That's awful, isn't it? You know, he's yeah. like, I mean, what, what if what if she didn't die? What if she didn't die and they were together like she's not gonna she's not gonna be like oh yeah that's all right <laughs> yeah you know um so there's yeah, no even, going back <laughs> no there was no there weren't was there so that even that's horrific but yeah i mean i again i thought it was a cool episode i i, I liked it I, I i wouldn't say it was necessarily my best episode but i don't i haven't quite decided a best episode do you know what i mean i haven't yeah. kind of gone well i like that one i didn't like that one i've kind of liked them all for different reasons they've all been very different yep. All of them have been very different so far, um, and I've enjoyed them all for different reasons. Yep, same. Um, and I don't know if you said to me right now, go and choose one to rewatch. I'd it, 
I don't know. I don't know how I would choose. I, I think I would just have to throw them all up in the air and see which one landed face up because mm-hmm. I don't really know which one I would like to watch again over one of the others. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it might. That might change. I might develop a favourite, <laughs> but at the moment I don't really think I've got one. So um, yeah, good. Let's let's keep going on now. What if train? I, 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 just, I, I don't go ahead, Alex. Oh, I was just going to say, I also kind of liked when, uh, you know, after the Watcher acknowledges Strange and they acknowledge each other, he mentions at one point in that episode, too, he's like, you know, I sensed your presence earlier, like on in the episode, and I knew someone was there, but I didn't know it was you. So you kind of have that really like massive gradual power increase in Strange. So it makes you wonder, you know, it's like, is Strange so powerful because of all these entities that he can sense the Watcher or, you know, like, because they talk about like Wanda, for example, she's stronger than the Sorcerer Supreme. They say that, you know, in WandaVision. Mm-hmm. So it's like Strange is massively strong. You know, he's almost on that level of the Watcher at that point. Well, it makes you think, too, did the Watcher purposely reveal himself to Strange mm-hmm. as well? Because remember that quote from Jeffrey Wright about you know, there might be more than meets the eye here with the watcher and he's not just a watcher that he, he may interfere. So I wonder if that was the beginning of, of the watcher starting to reveal himself to some of these people and interfering. Yeah. yeah I, do you know what? I, I hope he doesn't, if I'm honest, I quite like the whole premise. He, it's almost like we've had four episodes of the what? Yeah. Four. Yeah. Yeah. We've had four episodes of the watcher saying i i cannot i will not i must not interfere and then four episodes later i'm interfering <laughs> so oh, you've gone back on your word pretty quickly there <laughs> so 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 dave one of the mod admins you know he pointed this out too is that every time we see the the watcher talk about the episode introduce it it's on a tva screen so is the watcher somehow tied to the tva maybe and that's why we'll see him interfere or, or do something Maybe he's maybe he's the one watcher because I know the watchers have at times. There's multiple watchers. Some yeah. have interfered. Um, so there is going to be a point where he will fully interfere, and he's so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. And it'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see how he interferes as mm-hmm. well. Like what he does mm-hmm. when he interferes. Like what's he going to do? Like what power has he got? Yeah. Can he just sort of stop time or rewind them or flick them away or something? I don't know. I also wonder too. To if any of this episode will tie in No Way Home. Yeah. Just what we saw from the trailer, the arrogance of of, of Strange, th- that whole thing, will any of this tie into No Way Home? Like, is that the real Strange? Is that the, a split Strange, maybe? I think it'd be interesting to reflect on what if um, in about three months' time. It'd be interesting in January to turn around and go, look how what if has affected the last sort of three or four movies and how it's going to affect... Or maybe after Multiverse of Madness, that would probably be a better idea to reflect on what if I think we'll have a better idea then yep. of how much it's going to affect the, the mainline MCU. Because we, we have the Captain Carter rumor already for that series. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if anything else will bleed over to No Way Home or Multiverse of Madness from this series also. Mm, definitely. Cool. Cool. Well, um, we've covered a lot there, guys. Once again, another Mammoth episode. Uh, a Shang-Chi review, news and rumors, and what if... Doctor Strange episode. So um, I think we're uh, I think we're all but done there. Don't uh, do you agree? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Um, well, look, we'll be uh, we'll be back on um, next weekend, and uh, fingers crossed, we've got a special guest coming on next weekend. So um, you'll see uh, you'll see our ugly mugs again, and uh, and another new person. So um, and uh, hear another new voice. So look, it's been great to uh, chat with you guys again, as always. Um, people that you're listening get on our Facebook group uh, MCU uh, DNT. Um, it's the the name is actually going to change soon. Um, we'll explain why when that does happen. Um, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, um, we've got the YouTube channel if you want to watch us, or we're on any of the podcast platforms if you just want to listen. Um, But whatever you do, make sure you rate us, make sure you subscribe, make sure you leave reviews, share it with your buddies. Um, If you've enjoyed it, of course. If you haven't, (laughs) see you later. Um, No, it's been a pleasure, chaps. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see you again. Thank you. Why don't you tell them about the time we